the second round of the playoffs was super exciting with lots of surprises and stuff. And then the conference finals have started and it's just a different, it's just a different energy. It's just a different vibe. Uh, we have, we have not been able to have a close game as of yet. And to help, uh, unpack all of this is a, a great friend of the pod, a great human being in general, one of the most talented people out there. His ad reads are impeccable. Folks, it's Zach Harper, NBA writer for The Athletic, host of Cinephobe, Count the Dink, Series XM's NBA Radio, and all that. Zach, welcome back. How are you? Thank you for having me back. Um, I will sell anything. I will ad read anything. It doesn't matter the product. I will do it. If you want to send me an ad read, I will read it for money. I am not above hawking dick pills. In pra- in fa- I prefer it. All of it. I prefer uh, it. All of it. It's re- I'm I'm not even I'm not blowing smoke. They're really great. Like you do a great job. People don't understand how awkward those could be, and you crush it. Thank you. I I feel like look, it's part of the podcast, right? And if the goal is to get someone to not skip ahead thirty seconds, then I'm gonna try to put a little bit of something into it. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Uh, kind of depends on some of the copy. I did one recently where I'm just I'm going over what I have to read, and I was like. That the this is this is a skip. This is gonna be a skip. I would just say this to all the copywriters out there: stop, just stop making bad reads. <laughs> just give us it's some material very to true. use. I I could not agree more. <laughs> um, let's get into these conference finals. Let's start with the um. Let's start with the game that happened last night. Yeah. Uh, Heat Celtics game four. The Heat uh simply got trounced. Uh, I have one order of business to get to a little bit before that. You are an expert in heat culture. Yeah. Uh, you are a, a, a Miami as a ge- as a geographic location aficionado. Um, the the heat uh, famously have a uh, a body fat stipulation that yeah. they that uh, that is very rigorous. Did they just like let that slide for Kyle Lowry? What's the deal? Yeah, <laughs> What's the deal with it? Is he have like a? <laughs> it's interesting, right? It's a great question uh, because famously, like James Johnson, right, who's like one yes. of the most insane yeah, right. athletes you could ever know, he didn't meet the body fat requirement by like. Yeah, and they're like, oh, he came out of shape. It's like, no, 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 he missed it by like point four percent or something like that. Right, but you yeah. missed it, and you look at it, and is there just something where Kyle's like, yeah, I'm not doing that shit. Like I look, I, I wonder. I'll be there, um, but let's just. He's, I imagine he's just like. Let's just say, sixty percent of my body fat is in my ass. Like let, <laughs> let, let's just say that, and we can all move past it. And let's just look the other way when I'm changing shirts in the locker room. Like it's it's fine. <laughs> um, uh, this series has been uh, extremely physical. The Heat have won all of two quarters and somehow have two games in the win column. Uh, it, the, the series is a two to two, uh, but it, the sense you get watching them is that the lack of, of real uh, depth uh, plus the attrition of playoff time plus these are kind of older guys that are banged up um, and you just feel like it's going to be really tough for the Heat to win this series. Your thoughts on 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 the last game? I actually feel pretty good about the Heat despite an 18 to 1 start through like five <laughs> and a half minutes of play in which Derek White I was like Derek White is going to outscore the Heat in this quarter. Like this is unacceptable. Um also shouts to him and his and his wife on a new on a new child. Uh I guess it's the Fred Van Vliet bump. Um I feel I actually feel pretty good about them because I think that that team, maybe them and the Warriors are the two teams that can absolutely just let a stinker completely go. Like within an hour of of the game, I think they're capable of just letting that go. Boston seems to be doing that too. Boston is has been incredibly resilient. Um, but I think like the history of the Heat, the history of the Warriors shows a little bit more than that uh, in that department. But yeah, like I, <laughs> this is a this is a team that's supposed to be able to execute however they want. They're supposed to be bullies. And by the way, like they got through the Hawks and whatever the hell that was with Philadelphia. I don't yeah. see the same war of attrition with them as like the Celtics who just got through Giannis, right? 
And sure, yeah. there was no Chris Middleton, but but they just got through Giannis and, and the Bucks in a way more physical series. And so I actually think the Heat are kind of – they tapped out early last night. They just didn't bring it. I think they got their, their game in Boston and feel like, all right, we have home court advantage. But they are just one quarter away from – snatching the Celtics pride every single time like it's it's weird how they've now won I mean I I don't want to correct you on your show but you um rudely did not give them the fourth quarter of game four which they won uh, sorry by four yeah, points okay, okay. Sorry they, tied, sorry. they tied they tied quarter three right, right. they won the fourth right, quarter right, by okay. four points thanks to Duncan Robinson hitting three pointers okay and I think Omer your seven got in there I'm not sure actually but there is uh you know, that's three quarters now, but it's weird how they can just kind of meander for three quarters, have that one demolition quarter, and then the other team's like, what the hell just happened? Yeah, I, I mean, I guess, I guess for me, it just feels like the way they have to offensively, uh, particularly with Hero out, um, it's just going to be harder for them to find their points. And so, you know, the way they've won in this series has been, we're just going to get insanely physical we're going to disrupt you we're going to we're going to get 19 live ball turnovers we're going to uh be wildly physical in the paint and that, and we're going to get turnovers and that's how we're going to uh, uh go to the other end and start scoring and it just feels like man that that physicality cuts both ways and it takes a toll and you're uh, you're right i mean they got they got some nice uh minutes out of you know duncan robinson and and martin uh <laughs> but it's like where <laughs> <laughs> but it just did you know that Martin's first name uh, is Caleb, the, or did you just forget which which Martin it is there? Because there is a twin I did brother. forget which Martin was. <laughs> yes, uh, but it just feels like uh, they have to. It has to become so ugly for them to win. Like they have to make it. Yeah. It has to be a grappling match well, for them to get in. Isn't this. that weird though? Like, and I think this could probably end up like biting in the series if they do lose the series. I think it is because they're looking for that kind of street fight mentality and then sometimes they just forget to punch yeah. but it feels like it feels like they're showing up to the DMV without an appointment and loving it like just like who knows what's yeah. gonna happen just be like, like yeah I, mean, I either talk my way into getting my new tags yeah. or I don't <laughs> um uh let's go to uh Dallas Warriors where the uh, the sense is that uh, Luca is great. He's shown why he is an MVP candidate every year. Certainly one of the most, if not the most exciting under 25 player in the NBA, but they just don't have enough. The Mavs simply don't have enough. Maxi Kleber is terrified. Reggie Bullock uh, picked the uh, wrong game to <laughs> oh, not hit a single man. shot, and uh, they just don't have enough. Yeah, I felt bad for Reggie because... He had a couple, I, I wouldn't say like three or four shots in the maybe the first quarter, definitely the first half, that just went in and out, right? Like rattled in, rattled out. And and so it looked like he was going to have a great game early because he was he was pretty on point, like he was getting good shots. And then as it went to like 0 for 7, 0 for 8, 0 for 9, 0 for 10, you just kind of felt really bad for him and his legs kind of left him. With Maxi Kleber, like he's another guy that they need to knock down shots. He got afraid to shoot. He has to. He was afraid to shoot. No, he looked... He that can't happen. It, notably, yeah, I mean, he would he would kind of like pump fake on a wide open yeah. shot with no one running to him, and then no one hoping that someone would run to him so that he could give it up, and then no one would run to him and he'd be like, "Fuck, well, I'm giving it up." Yeah, anyway. I, blew, I think I blew this opportunity. I don't have this rhythm anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and so it's funny because like I've seen a lot of criticism online of like before the series started. The Warriors are going to beat them, and everyone's going to complain that Luka doesn't have any help, right? And now we have to do referendums on every quarter lost and half lost and game lost. It's like, all right, should we talk about Luka? He's about to get swept in the conference finals. And it's like, well, they got to the conference finals and got through the one seed. It's, 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 a, great, it's a great step forward. But also, I think in game three, like, look, game two, they choked away to a team that's just way more experienced. Game three, they got a ton of good looks. They're actually generating... 28 wide open three pointers per game. Their offense is working as yeah, designed. And, and, Absolutely. And I don't think you can expect their defense to be great in this matchup against the Warriors because the Warriors are just, they're fucking good. Like, they're just yeah. really good. And, the, the, good. and Dallas only has so many yeah. personnel. Like, Jalen Brunson's 6 1 with short arms. He's not going to be able to do anything defensively. Yeah. <laughs> Luka Doncic is Luka Doncic. Like, he's not going to do anything defensively. So you're asking two to three guys at any time to cover the entire Warriors team. It's not going to work. So you do that by knocking down shots, and they just haven't knocked down open shots. 
Um, I, I got to ask, as a Minnesota Timberwolves longtime fan, um, you are very versed in the world of Andrew Wiggins, who uh, in his time with the Warriors has, has become an all-star, t- uh, certainly taken a, taken a leap in terms of being able to be an impact player at a high level, at a winning level. And then uh, in the most recent game, we just watched him, you know, manifest at the next level to the point that he's dunking over uh, Luka Doncic, who made a valiant effort to flop away the poster. It almost worked. Did it, was there so much force? <laughs> was there so much force in the contact? Because he hits him, his off arm hits Luca kind of in the arm and in the chest, and Luca's like, "My mouth, uh, yeah. like what? Like what? Well, uh, help! I've, I've been I've decapitated, been, I've been struck in the jaw. Like it was. I've, look, I've watched that replay so many times because it's just what a what a play. And every time it gets to the contact and his head snaps back, I just start laughing uncontrollably. It's so it's good. So good. Take Line is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. I want to tell you about the easiest, most fun way to spice up your season. It's light BDSM. No, it's Underdog Fantasy and their brand new Pick'em game. Just pick over or under your favorite or least favorite player stats and you can win up to 20 times your money in a single night. Underdog keeps it super simple with their easy-to-use website and mobile apps. That's the thing. That's the brand that Underdog has. Warriors Mavs tonight. How many threes will Steph Curry hit? How many points will Luka score? How many flops will he have? You can't bet on that, but I wish you could. Pick between two and five players, and you could take home some cold, hard cash. Use code TAKELINE and get your first deposit doubled by Underdog. What do you make of this uh, leap that Wiggins uh, is taking, and what what did the Warriors do? do right what did Wiggins do right in this stint I mean I think they held him accountable for the first time right like uh, it was like that Wolves culture is just so bad it's it's been so bad he had and some due to tragedy some due to just um yeah due to just you know incompetence in the in the ownership but like he had a he had a new coach almost every year of his of the first five years of his career right and like I don't think people I always I always kind of link it back to like uh, to Alex Smith, quarterback. Alex Smith, like, taking over Aaron Rodgers and everyone, like, oh, what a mistake. And, yeah, it was. He also had six offensive coordinators in his first six seasons, right? Like, they, you just need continuity. You can't have just new faces in all the time. It's why the Kings are the Kings. No offense. It's why the Knicks are the Knicks. Like, it's just they have new people coming in to be authority figures all the time, and there's no accountability. And so with Wig, like, it was – just something where he's crazy talented. Like Jimmy Butler in his brief time there was like, Andrew Wiggins the most talented dude on this team. Like he's just, he is. It's just he doesn't harness it. And so the Warrior, I mean, if you remember Glenn Taylor before he gave him a, a max extension was like, I need you to promise to try. I promise to try. Yeah, I know. That was one of, <laughs> one of the most notable oh. things that has happened in recent also, NBA history. How do you let <laughs> that leak out? That that was a conversation you had with a guy you're giving $150 million to. That it's was just incompetent. They so that incompetent. Slip. But, um, but yeah, like I think once he got to the Warriors, you saw last year. Like Wiggins looked terrible last year. He was so lost throughout most of that yep. season because the Warriors are yep. hard to play for. In that everything's live. Everything's there is no wasted yeah. emotion. Re- read, react, and it's, cut. And it's not yep, just cut through. Gotta... It's live cut, hands ready, get ready to spring, right? And and Wiggins had to learn how to do all that stuff. He's had the defensive stuff in him for a while. Like, I know he's been a, a joke defensively on, on NBA Twitter, and, and rightfully so. Like, he falls asleep off the ball all the time. But I don't know if people remember, when he was a rookie, there were games he guarded Jimmy Butler. There were games he guarded Chris Paul. There were games he, he guarded James Harden. And he did a good – for a rookie, like, he did a good job. Like, he has that in him. It's just you need Draymond – getting him motivated. You need Andre Iguodala coaching up up on the sideline. You need Steph Curry making him a threat at all times. And so I think it just, they finally got the wolves out of him. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about that flop. It did almost work. Yeah. I think that uh, flopping and officiating in general has been, a, a, as always, a big topic. But it really feels like with the review process and the flopping, we've got a review process that is not that that is solving for a, the problem mm-hmm. we don't have, which is everything else but flopping. Uh, I think part of the issue is that we also have some really really high level floppers left in the playoffs. What if anything can be done about simulation about some of these uh, at times really like frustrating 
uh, plays that some some very very talented actors in the NBA. Uh, yeah, execute. Um, I wish there was like a system where like you could find players for flopping. I wish like they could come up with something where there's like a warning the first right. time, and then maybe right. like a. 5k 10k 50k you know just an escalating scale um but I, I just they don't have the technology for it you know it's just they don't know how to do that so um unfortunately they don't uh they don't hurt any of the pocketbooks or anything like that's that's what it is right also mark davis fuck you i am so like Look, I, I try to be as understanding. <laughs> I hate when fans bl blame the refs. I do. It's like there are so many bad decisions yeah. your team made on the way to a loss that I, like, I just hate blaming the officials. But Mark Davis waited two and a half to three seconds after Wiggins landed to call that foul, and I don't yeah. know why. John Hollinger had a joke that he just wanted to go watch it on the monitor. No, you ruined that moment. You tried to <laughs> fuck it up for everybody. He did. And it's just like, you got to get rid of the bad he officials. Did. Like you, I mean, you've talked about Scott Foster a lot, right? Like you've talked about Scott Foster a yeah, lot. Like, like, yeah, like it's, hard it's, not like, to talk it's about Scott it. Foster. Yeah. It's Kane Fitzgerald. It's Tony Brothers. It's Mark Davis. It's James Williams. I shouldn't know these names. Like, I just shouldn't. And it. what bothers me is everyone looks back and they're like, Joey Crawford was terrible. Joey Crawford was fucking great. Joey Crawford was an amazing rep that held people accountable. Sure, yeah, the weird thing with Tim Duncan, it's bad. That's one thing. That's one thing. It's one thing. Yeah. It's one thing. Uh, yeah, I don't know what we could. It, it would be great to bring back that uh that focus on on simulation and the fine structure. I am of the, I am of the, uh, of the opinion that if you review a play and then realize that the other player flopped, as in that that Luka Dunk, that you give them some kind of like uh, a, a some new kind of technical that doesn't eliminate them from the game or something. Like if they already have one, you give them the simulation technical. They don't get they don't get ejected, but I don't know. It's some. What if we had a flagrant zero? That's a great. Yeah. That's a great way to do it. Like, and you and you add them up, and then something happens when you get sure. to six or five or something like that. But you don't get right. ejected yeah, in the moment. It, uh, but they're just. It just feels like it, it, if you look at that play again, and oh, that uh, that was a flop, and that was the reason I called it offensive foul. Then it, it should flip on that player. That there should be something that holds that player. Yeah. Account. Also, like on reviews, if we're gonna do it, and if they're gonna take three minutes each time, like if you see something say something right the whole like airport yeah. model like you see like actually that was a foul on bam out of bio like we got to call that we got to right. reverse this whole thing it shouldn't just be on what's reviewable or what's challengeable like what did you see on the play if you see someone off in the distance punch somebody all right well that's the the yeah. call of the play or whatever and so yeah like i i hate reviews let's, let's either do them properly or let's just not yes. do them at all finally do you, uh, what do you think of these series what your your predictions on how we're going to watch this play out Obviously, uh, at three zero, we've never seen anybody in the NBA come back from that. Um, uh, your thoughts? As someone who, trying to be quirky, picked Mavs in six, I don't feel great about the prediction. Uh, everyone on <laughs> everyone on the Athletic NBA Show podcast was like, "Oh yeah, Warriors in this." Warriors. I was like, "Well, we can't all be the Warriors." So, all right, I'll pick Mavs in six. And yeah. then thought, and then once it was two zero, I was like. Well, this doesn't feel great, but maybe it'll be like the Phoenix series. And then I watched Reggie Bullock like go over ten and thought, okay, well, this was just stupid. Uh, no, I think the Warriors. I mean, at best, the Warriors win in five, right? Like maybe Dallas gets right. a game, but even the, I mean, Luke had forty last game, and it didn't matter. So I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't think there's any hope for that. Uh, I still feel pretty good. I think about about the Heat. Like I think the Heat. Um, I think game five will determine it for them. I don't think they can come back down from three two. Even if they even if they tied the series in Boston, if you flip those games, I think going back to Miami for a game seven, I, I just think this Boston team is very resilient. But I, I'll stick. I had Heat and six. I'll stick with Heat and six. I feel pretty good about it. And then finally, as uh, as the co-host of Cinephobe, as a movie expert, as a person who just received an eight and a half minute standing ovation at the Cannes Film Festival Film Festival. Congratulations on that, by the Thank way. That was amazing. Thank you. Um your give us a give us a movie review. Tell us what you've seen lately that is really struck. Okay, well I saw The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. Uh, I knew of course you of course five you times. 
in the theater. I saw it twice. In it, the first day I saw it, I saw it twice. I went in the morning. I went at night. Of course um, and it was look, man. I I've never loved a movie more. I'm not saying it's the best movie I've ever seen. It's it's not. But I loved it so much. I couldn't stop going back to it. I was addicted to it. I am addicted to it. I keep checking uh, Apple TV for when it's going to be available for purchase, like for pre order. Like I love this movie so much. I genuinely love and appreciate Nicolas Cage. I think he's an unbelievable actor. Even in the bad movies, there are just moments where like he just brings it and the quote unquote like fictionalized Nick with a K cage that he is in this movie, it's still so very much him. It's not cartoonish. Like there's a lot of cartoonish things going around uh, around him and and it's just like it's such a beautiful ode to like a a truly great actor that had got into some financial problems and has had to do some weird shit because of it. But Pedro Pascal is phenomenal in it. Every supporting character is great. Uh what's oh man, who plays his cousin? Paco Leon is like unbelievable in that movie as you know one of the bad guys and it's just i genuinely like i know people think of nicholas cage as a joke and sure in many ways he is like go see that movie it's so fucking good it's so well done it's so like self-aware um throughout the whole process and it's just fun like it was just a fun movie to go to he is zach harper nba writer for the athletic co-host of Cinephobe, Count the Dings, and the Sirius XM's NBA Radio. Zach, thank you so much. Thank you.